Most cultures are juggling many roles in our lives. Mother, daughter, career, friend, and so many more. Today's guest, Lara Mata, is one of the trio of amazing women that run Make Modern, the online quilting magazine from Australia. And we are talking about the challenges of running a magazine, a family, and trying to fit in some time for quilting, as well as the challenges of the past two years. And stay to the end where she has a bonus for all my viewers. So grab your sewing and a cup of tea. And here's my interview with Lara Mata. Thank you, Lara, for being on the show. Welcome. I understand you are coming to us from South Australia. That's right. Thank you for having me, Karen. Now, I understand before you came to quilting, you had an interesting job with a Canadian connection. Can you tell us more about that? Yes, I did. So before I started quilting, I had a wonderful, slightly stressful, but wonderful research job at a university. I'm a medical scientist by training, and I used to teach... Um, a lot of Indigenous health workers and nurse practitioners around the world how to do point of care testing. So everybody's probably a bit more familiar with point of care testing now. It's because um, there is a link with COVID and you can do a point of care test for COVID. So it's like a rapid test, something that gives you a result while you're still with the health worker. And I worked with a fantastic group of people in Ontario, Canada, who used to take the rapid tests. Um, at the time, it was for STIs and for diabetes. And they used to take the tests out to um, communities that were very rural um, around Ontario. In the Northern Ontario, there's <coughs> some very sparse, isolated groups of people. Yeah, and I think- healthcare is one yeah, of their biggest challenges. Absolutely. And there are a lot of similarities between um, the Canadian rural populations and Australian um, Indigenous communities as well. Uh, I think we're the only two countries in the world perhaps that really understand rural and what it's like to be thousands of kilometres away from a laboratory. Well, I remember from my time in Australia, there was the term back of beyond and then there was back, back of beyond. <laughs> That's right. So how did you come to quilting? So it's, it's a bit of a long story. Um, when I was 18, I went over to, for my gap year, I went over to Sicily in Italy. I had decided that I wanted to be an exchange student for a year. And I thought going to live in Italy would be really fun. Uh, at the time when I was applying, I said that I'd like to go to Florence, but nowhere further south. I think that must have got lost in translation because I got sent all the way down to Sicily. Um, but that's, it's great because the day I got there, I met my husband, which was wonderful. But while I was in Sicily, I became really good friends with an Australian girl who was also on exchange there. And her mum sent over a quilt. Now I grew up in far North Queensland, which is a tropical, tropical paradise. It's always warm. And so I'd never seen a handmade quilt before. And my friend's mum sent her over this amazing quilt and it had her name quilted into it. And I remember her at the time going, oh, mum sent me another quilt, that's nice. But I was just blown away. My mum was a sewer, she was a dressmaker. So I could kind of understand how long it must have taken her mum to make this beautiful quilt. And I thought to myself, when I get back to Australia, I'm going to wait and make one. Fast forward about six years, I'd been back in Australia for, for six, six years. I got married to my husband who I met in Sicily and I had studied to be a scientist and I was working in a lab and my grandfather sadly passed away and my grandma gave all of the grandchildren $500 and she said, buy something that you want um, that will help you remember your grandfather. And I thought, I'd really like a sewing machine. So I bought myself a sewing machine and I Googled, I ended up finding a fabric shop online and I bought myself a fat quarter bundle of Tula Pink. I got her Prince Charming line. And then I found Jeannie Banker 
um, and her blog. And I just followed one of her patterns and I ended up making this king size quilt top, which then <laughs> sat in the cupboard for about, I think seven years because it was just so daunting to quilt. Um, but as soon as I'd made the quilt top, I just knew that I absolutely adored quilting. I bought hundreds of yards of fabric and I, I made lots of more quilts, but they were much smaller. So it was a while before I actually got that quilt finished. So do you consider yourself a modern quilter? Yeah, it's, it's funny really. I try lots of different things. Um, not all my quilts are modern. I try a bit of art quilts, anything that I like the look of, I do a bit of applique, um, but I use predominantly, well, probably all modern, modern fabrics. Um, I don't like to label myself, but yeah, I guess, I guess I'm, I guess I'm a modern quilter. Um, the only modern fabrics, uh, the only fabrics that I include in my quilts that aren't modern, uh, I really like in every single one of my quilts, I include a little piece of old embroidery that I, my um, grandma, both my grandmas have passed away and both of them had a really large collection of embroidered tablecloths and doilies and lots of things. And so I cut them up, sorry, grandmas, um, and I put a little piece in each of my quilts. I think that's a lovely idea. It just makes it really special for me. Now your bio says that you like hand sewing. Do you mean hand quilting or English paper piecing or both? Both. It's, um, I like the speed of machine quilting, but when I'm hand quilting or hand piecing, I also do a lot of mending, mending clothing and embroidery onto clothing. When I do that, I can sit with my family and join in a little bit more. Whereas when I'm on the machine, I'm away in my sewing, in my sewing room. Now, I saw on your feed that you made the Aviatrix quilt by Elizabeth Hartman. I made yes. mine too. What did you think about it? I made that quite a few years ago. I really enjoyed that, actually. Um, it took me a, a long time to finish, but I started it at a quilt retreat. So I was able to cut everything out and I got quite a bit of the top done there. I liked the fact that there was a little bit of hand piecing, a lot of machining. The pattern was really well written. Yeah, it was good. It was, it was fun. I, I, I like the way that she laid out the colors. Like, well, one, the colors were bright, but I've seen it done in pale colors. I've seen it done. I shifted mine, but I, I agree with you. I think it's a very good pattern. And I wouldn't say it's a beginner pattern. Definitely that, that inner bird is more advanced and those butterflies on the edges. I wish I had known what, how to make them before I cut my fabric because I probably would have cut them slightly different, but I thought it yes. was a great pattern. Yes. It was the first quilt I'd ever made that was all solids. And I fairly well copied Elizabeth's color, color layout and um, the way she did hers. Probably now if I'd done it, I'd make it a bit more me by including some novelty prints. I I love novelty prints and I'd probably put just a few prints in there if I did it again. So where did the idea for Make Modern come from? Well, my partners and I, so Jane, Christy and myself, we met online. We live thousands of kilometres away from each other and we were in a paper piecing bee. So we used to make very complicated foundation paper piece blocks for each other. There was about eight of us and um, we used to send them to each other. That was called Wombat Stew. Wombat Stew sounds terrible, but it's actually a children's book, a very funny Australian children's <laughs> book. And um, it was a nod to the fact that we were all Aussies or had an Australian connection. And we became quite good friends. We used to chat every day in our group chat. And we, st we still actually are in contact with each other. Jane comes from an editor's background. She wrote for a lot of quilt magazines and some other lifestyle magazines. And Christy runs Quiet Play, which is a fantastic pattern design company. And together they got talking about wanting to start a modern, modern quilt magazine. At the time, modern quilting in Australia was quite new and evolving. There were no magazines that were modern. And there were some American and one English modern quilting magazine at the time. But nobody was really focusing on the amazing quilt designers that we had in Australia. And the girls needed somebody that would take on the business side, the website, 
And so they approached me and we started from scratch. None of us had any background, um, any business kind of formal business training, um, but we just started from the ground up and readers supported us from the get-go. And what issue are you on now? We have just published issue 42. And how many issues come out a year? So we publish every two months, so six issues a year. Each one is over 100 pages long. So I'm glad it's every two months and not monthly. Yeah, we're coming up to our seventh birthday. Seventh birthday. Wow, congratulations. Thank you. Do you all have very defined tasks at the magazine or do you all pitch in for every stage? Absolutely no. We're definitely, I call us a tripod. We can't do each other's jobs. It would be devastating if something happened to one of us because I think it would be the end of the magazine, really. Very defined roles. So Jane does all of the editing and writes the fantastic articles. Christy is involved in all of the pattern submission and turning the articles into something that looks beautiful. And I'm the back end. So I do the website, customer service, all of the fun stuff at the back. So how do you choose from all the wonderful submissions, your patterns? What does it have to be to get into your magazine? We try to encourage quilters from everywhere. Um, you don't have to be a big name in quilting to have a, have a submission accepted. It, it, we love first-time first time designers. Um, you know, we, we have had people who have submitted to lots of magazines as well and we work with everybody. I guess for us, we have, we now have um, subscribers from 70 countries around the world. So we've got to think about perhaps even if something's not exactly our cup of tea, perhaps our readers will love it. It's just got to feel modern and look really fresh. And yeah, if we think it's going to fit fit the magazine and the readers are going to love it, then we include it. We like to have um, all sorts of different patterns. So we have small projects that people can take along to quilt groups, all the way up to really big quilts in the magazine. So the past two years with world events um, and shifts happening, how has Make Modern had to shift? We've been really fortunate in that because we don't share an office, and we live in different states across Australia, we were already set up to work from home. Other than having our partners and our children around a little bit more often in our offices, working life hasn't really changed. Um, at the start of the pandemic, we saw quite a large influx of subscribers as people were staying at home. We are noticing now that um, people are being a little bit tighter with their, with their money, um, they're having to cut costs. Are you putting your articles and the people who are submitting to you, are you putting them through a lens of diversity? Absolutely. It's very important to us that we really showcase all quilters. We want a diverse range of quilters from all over the world. It's important to us that we have a lot of Australian quilters as well. But yeah, we try really hard to, to get quilters from all walks of life. Have you ever made a pattern for the magazine yourself? Yes, I have made a few patterns at the start. Um, I made this fantastic uh, denim quilt. Can I show you? Yes, please. This is a play mat. Oh, wow. And we still use it. I think I made that six years ago. So is that and made out of old jeans and things like that? Yes, that's right. And I was heavily pregnant when I made it. So I just tied, I tied it. Um, Instead of pushing it through the machine, I did tie quilting. I wanted to try that out. That's very cool. I've, I've got all these jeans. My sons go through jeans around the waistband and they, uh, they have all these perfectly, as, a, as far as I'm concerned, perfectly good denims. Like they don't go through the knees or anything like that. So I'm always trying to figure out ways to do it. But that, that looks beautiful. Now, what did you use to, is it just regular cotton in between the blocks or is that denim as well? It's thicker black. I think it's called duck, duck cloth. Okay, so I know what you're talking black about. Cloth. Yeah. Um, but actually, you'll see a photo of my son. If you download the $1 issue, there's a little article about, about my son in there and a photo of his cute little face when he won 
when he recently won his first ever quilt prize um, at oh, our wow. local show. So he won, a, he won a sewing machine, which he was very proud of. He was only five when he made the quilt. And there's a photo of him in there. Wow. So you've passed on your love of quilting to your son. Now, is your daughter old enough to be sewing? My daughter's all? just turned three. So we'll give it, we'll give it a year or so. I don't like to push it. My son one day came into my sewing room and he was looking through my scrap drawers. They're all organized in rainbow order. And he was looking through them and he said, I want to make a quilt. I was like, don't get too excited, Mom, don't get too excited. But we started and I said, will you put them in a rainbow order? I did a really fun Instagram stories of the process, actually. Um, yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was lovely to do with him. That was during, during our first lockdown. We started that last year. So are you still sewing on that original machine or have you updated? I did update. I've updated to a Benina. Actually, I've updated twice since, since starting. I needed a bit, bit more throat space. And, I think that's what um, gets most people. Yeah, yeah something that was you, a bit heavy, heavier, juicy. So now that you're busy with Make Modern and you have all these patterns coming through your magazine all the time, how often do you get a chance to make one of them? Oh. I don't stitch as much as I would like. I make around about one, one or two quilts a year. When I first started quilting in 2012, I had no children and, you know, double income, no kids. I bought a lot of fabric and I basically just started every quilt pattern that took my fancy. So I have a cupboard that's full of work in progresses. And last year, I really said to myself, you need to get that under control before you start some more quilts. I've done pretty well. Um, it is, it's been halved and I'm working very hard to work through those. Yeah, I try to live a, a waste, quite a waste-free life. Uh, we avoid plastic. We avoid buying things that we don't need. Um, and so my, my work in progress cupboard made me feel very guilty. But now I'm on top of it. I'm starting to feel, feel a bit freer. Well, I also find that those work in progresses, they're decisions that you made when you were a younger quilter. So yes. your color palette has changed. Your skill level has improved. And they're not the choices that you would make now. So I find it really important to get them out of the way so you're not constantly looking at old you. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. And yeah, mistakes that you made before you got better. And yeah, absolutely. It's some of them, it's kind of like, wow, why did I even start this? And I wish I'd finished them so that now I could be working on things that I like now, but I've given myself two years to do it and, and then we're going to move on. So what was your big beginner mistake that you made when you started? Oh, probably using a fat quarter bundle that just was all the prints from one designer's collection. I probably wouldn't do that again. You need, you need a little bit of a mixture of blenders. And so I don't use to, I don't tend to use many solids, but I use a lot of blenders now and novelty prints and things that are a little bit more fun. And I think mixing them together gives your eye space to, to rest. Do you put a label on your quilts? Yes, I do put a label on the back of my quilts. Generally, How do you make it? Oh, it really depends. Now that I know that once I've made a quilt, I want to move on, I will try to use every last little block that came from that quilt on the quilt somewhere. So my backs are usually always pieced and my labels generally have a nod to the pattern in them. So I might make little mini versions of the blocks and put that onto the label. Or if I'm running out of time, then I literally get a fabric marker, draw a box and write the name of the quilt in the back. So have you ever experimented with other fabrics? So I like to use linen blends. And as I said, I really like embroidered um, linen tablecloths and doilies and things. So I always put them in. If I've got kind of really special cotton clothing that might have fallen apart or cotton doona covers. I'll cut those up and put them in there. 
And what is your favorite part of the quilting process? Oh, my favorite part is diving in, picking the fabrics, cutting up the scraps and fussy cutting little motifs and putting them all together. I love that. Yeah, it's it's great. Angie Wilson, no Angel, used to be one of your writers. Did she teach you any of the fussy cutting or were you a fussy cutter already? I joined in with one of Angie's early sew alongs, the 100 Blocks, 100 Days Challenge, and learned a lot of fussy cutting from her through that. Yeah, she's she's a great friend of, of ours and I've met her on numerous occasions and yeah, adore Angie. We all do. I don't think you can be following her feed and not just get swept up in the whole fussy cutting way of doing things. She she does such a fantastic job. <laughs> she yeah, makes the blocks think, look so good. Absolutely. And she was definitely one of the first, if not if not the first, to do fantastic flat lay photography with lots of other different things in the image. And it just makes the blocks look gorgeous. So are you a member of a quilt guild? I'm a member of um, the South Australia Quilters. It's it's a traditional guild. Um, they're very supportive of me. I remember the first time I ever went to a meeting, it was like, ah, fresh meat, here's a young quilter. And ever since then, they've just taken me under, they've, they've taken me under their wing and taught me everything they know. And we learn from each other. They're very open to modern quilting and I'm very open to the techniques they use and and I just I just love them I love my guild I love my local guild I love the women they're just they're fantastic I think becoming a quilter um, it really taught me that age means nothing we go away together and the first time I went away with this group of women I mean I'm the youngest by I don't know, 40 years, but the, the first time I went away with them, you know, they're all staying up late at night talking about the same things as, as anybody my age would be. And since then, I've made friends of all ages and it really doesn't matter. They enrich your life. And yeah, it's, it's, it's also given me a real eye opener into being a daughter-in-law and being a daughter and how these women, yeah, I, I learn a lot from them. A lot. It is. Yeah, stuff quite, that's not even quilting related. Well, it's amazing how we absorb through Hollywood and TV shows all this how we're supposed to behave and, you know, how women disappear as they get yeah. older. And then you realize, you know, they're just... <laughs> getting it's just a number it's just a number you get old and you're still the fun crazy person that you were when you were 20. It gets more fun because you lose your inhibitions like it doesn't matter you don't have to be like everybody else just be yourself and people that love you will flock to you and people that don't will go away and and that makes life fun. I wish I could go back to my 15 year old self and say just be yourself and stop worrying stop trying to be like anybody else because people just want to see the real you wouldn't we love to just do that <laughs> sit I ourselves down at 15 saying <laughs> yeah. you think so you're fat now fun. but don't worry about it <laughs> you'll yeah. look back on these years and wish you were this weight <laughs> <laughs> how much traveling have you done for quilting I still haven't been to the States. I want to get to the States. I want to get to Canada. Canada's on my bucket list. Um, and Japan, I'd love to get to the Tokyo Quilt Festival. Because I'm married to somebody from Italy, anytime we're going to do an overseas trip, it feels like we need to and want to go and see his family. So I think that put a spanner in the works a little bit in terms of travel. but. Um, the girls and I, we would love to get over to the States at some stage when we're allowed to travel again. It's, yeah, it would be fantastic to go as a team to one of the big quilt shows. Um, I've think, done quite a bit of travel in, in Australia yeah. for quilting, been to quite a lot of our quilt shows. What are the big ones there? So we've got AQC, Australian Quilting Convention. We've got Australian Machine Quilters. Convention, which is actually here in, in Adelaide. 
but yeah, nothing, nothing as big as the States and our modern quilting um, shows still fairly small. Do you have a workshop or a lecture? Do you speak to guilds at all? I speak to guilds, yes. I've been to talk okay. um, to our local guild, but uh, we don't do any workshop or lectures. Probably it's on my bucket list one day to be a, quilt, a quilting teacher. I used to teach university students and that was a really fun part of my job. I'd, um, I'd love to do that for quilting. So if people are wanting to read your magazine, how do they find you? So I've set up a link. I think you'll put it in the comment section, but it's makemodern.com.au slash just get it done quilts. And on the link, you can get a copy of our magazine for just a dollar. So it's 112 pages of fantastic information. We've got 10 modern quilt patterns in there articles to read and some interviews with really fantastic quilters. You'll get a real feel for what we do and what we're about, and maybe you'll come back and subscribe. And if they want to find more about you, what is your Instagram handle? So my Instagram handle is Luella Bella. That's L-U-E-L-L-A-B-E-L-L-A. Um, and Make Modern is Make Modern Magazine. Thank you for being on the show today. It's been lovely to have you. And I hope one day we'll get to meet in person. Thank you so much for having me, Karen. That was fun. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Lara. To get your $1 copy of Make Modern, you'll find a link in the notes below. Makemodern.com.au slash just get it done quilts. I'll also link her social media and the Make Modern ones as well. Next up on Karen's Quilt Circle is Rose Parr, the author of So Healthy and Happy. She would like us all to sew pain-free until we're 100. And she has some pointers and stretches to get us there. You don't want to miss it, so be sure to subscribe. The next time you're in your sewing room, make sure to have Karen's Quilt Circle playing in the background. I have interviewed so many amazing quilters, let one inspire you. And check out my latest Stash Buster video with the free pattern download. Take care, and I'll see you next time.